Jeff Levy, head coach of Mississippi State, had his first game week press conference today. It'll be a great week. We got, we got a lot of work to do. We've gotten a lot done, but we're, we are. We're excited about getting going. So with that, we'll open it up. And there were some names missing off the initial depth chart that are some pretty prominent names, particularly big-time transfer receiver Kelly Akari, where's number one, expected to be wide receiver number one, not on the depth chart. So it turns out Coach Levy explained that he is hurt. He's banged up. And how hurt, we don't know how long. They did say they expect him back at some point. We just don't know the extent of the injury. With those three guys, um, I'll, I'll start with, with Kelly and Corey. Those, both those guys, man, have been dinged up, fighting some things uh, through fall camp. So won't they won't be available this week. But the one player that Coach Levy mentioned today by name was Trent Hudson. Ha having Trent get here with us this summer was huge for us. That is a guy that's had a bunch of production, has played a lot of ball. A transfer to Mississippi State from New Mexico State. And he's listed as a starter there at that other receiver position. And so I thought, why don't we take a little bit of a look at him? So here are seven plays from last year. Uh, two or three against Sam Houston State, who New Mexico State just, you know, demolished him. A couple of catches against Auburn. And he had a really good night in the Conference USA Championship game against Liberty. Again, big, tall kid, 6'3", 180. He had 10 touchdown catches last year for New Mexico State to lead them. They were a 10-win team, a really good team. And those 10 touchdown catches led their team by far. I think the next guy had like four. So he was a red zone kind of, you know, go up, get the ball. And to me, the things I watched, he not a lot of drops, and he really was sure-handed. Let's watch those seven plays and see what you think. All right, uh, here he is against Sam Houston. Uh, down here they go two-man route, little combo route, get a busted coverage. You will not see a more wide-open touchdown versus a busted coverage than this. Bear Bryant would have said he was so open it looked like he went out to practice early <laughs> all by himself. TV gave you an idea of what happened uh, later on with this. Uh, you can kind of see the routes, but uh, here it is. So two-man route on this side. He's on the outside bottom. And he's running the post. And uh, there's a safety back here, too. So somebody is supposed to have deep responsibility, right? Well, the corner obviously doesn't think it's him because he thinks this is my zone out here. And if I get threatened, you know, I'm jumping on it. So he's got one call in his head, like a cover three or like he's the flat defender. Linebacker is also running to the flat. The problem is this safety back here, for some reason, runs to the flat as well. So three defenders. He goes, he goes, he goes, and nobody runs with him. So, you know, example of DBs being on a different page. Everybody goes for the flat, bust it, and don't miss a layup. All right, here against Sam Houston, this is a really good catch. Up here, man-to-man, -man on the he's on the wide side. You know, we've seen him in the boundary, but here, ball on the right half, so he's a far left receiver. And it's uh, a man-free coverage, so he's going to get man-to-man. -man. I'll show you that. Uh, and uh, it's a go ball. You get four-man rush, block it up, throw the go ball, and he just goes up and makes a play, gets his foot down. Um, as far as how you know the design of the play got it to him, so it's split four wide with a single back into the boundary right here. And what the coverage is, is that they're rushing four, three down, one standing up, so those four are coming. And from a coverage standpoint, uh, like we said, everybody's in a man-to-man -man responsibility, these four receivers. This linebacker is actually coming down to take the back man-to-man -man or whatever he does. And this safety is rotating down. He's disguising it, but his job is to spy the quarterback, whatever that quarterback does, and not let him run for a first down right here. So it's man everybody with a spy on a quarterback, so he's even covered in man and a free safety back here in the middle of the field. But because of the width, it's a good decision by the quarterback, that even though that safety is back here in the middle, he can't get there because ball's on the right hash. He's kind of cheating towards the ball. We're out here on the basically the middle to the outside of the numbers. So by the time we're beat and I make this throw, that safety can't get there if I let it go soon enough, and that's what the quarterback does. Um, so you see the rotate, spy, throw it up, safety coming over, but he can't get there because the ball's on the sideline and you get a one-on-one -on -one jump ball play by a 6'3 kid. Really good catch. Uh, a couple of looks at it here. Watch it right here. High point to football, foot down. I mean, he really is a 
He, he catches the football. I mean, that's the thing that jumps out at me. Route up top. You know, initially, it's not like he beats him off the line. He, it's like the corner is expecting outside release, wants it. He's going to use the, the sideline to benefit him. But right here, I like this. You know, even though his head's around as a receiver, he kind of runs by him. See that? You know, you catch him, stalk him, and then get on top of him so that now he's playing catch up by the time the ball gets there. So that's pretty good. It'll be different in the SEC, though, that's for sure. And right, here he is, wide left, ball on the right hash here. He's singled up to the far side of the field. Interesting formation on third and goal from the 12, full house backfield. They go eight-man protect, touchdown. So you go back and take a look. Now, his route, obviously, is one-on-one, -on -one, you know, out there on the corner, but he's going to get some drop help run that inside bend that skinny post. And what happens is you wind up with a defender on top, a defender underneath, one peeling back. And so in between those three defenders, there's one little spot he's getting in. And you know, I don't think they're forcing the ball to him. It's just that down here in this red zone, he, you know, he had 10 touchdown catches on the year and the next closest guy on the team had four. So it's like he was their touchdown guy. So again, I got a little hole right here. We've seen him read underneath defenders really well, whether I'm underneath or on top before. This time he's on top in this hole, and you're in front of one, behind one, and in front of another, and get in that little hole right there. And the quarterback puts a ball in it and uh, shut it down and make the catch. And the, the formation, I, I found it interesting too. Third and goal from the 12, and look what they did. I mean, it's full house backfield. It's like having two up backs and a pistol formation. You don't see it much. And then they're all staying in in protection. It's eight-man protect. You can't get much more max protect than that. They only rush like six, maybe. Everybody else is in coverage, and you still go out here and find one receiver in the middle of their coverage, and it's just kind of playing with them at this point. And that put them up by four touchdowns right there. All right, here he is wide into the boundary and empty. And they're going to throw him a uh, screen. They're going to motion to him, get him an extra blocker in front because Auburn's not in man. So you feel like you got numbers, throw him a screen, get some of uh, that yardage back. Uh, they ran screens to him, like the size, ability to run behind a blocker. And being a singled up X guy, you know, they're giving him cushion a lot because he's a go ball guy, right? Like we're seeing that. So you get cushion a lot with him and they throw him a screen. And I think a little bit what's happening here too is. With empty, very intentionally, you're reading it. So ball's on left half, so the wide side of the field up here where the trips. And by motioning across down here to where he is, you probably have a read of which side you want to go to. And if you had a defender who was in man and running with him, that means you're going to have that extra defender over here to have to block him. But maybe pre-snap, if he doesn't, and in this case, you know, you go motion and nobody goes with him, so pretty clearly it's a zone coverage, and what Auburn's doing is dropping safety back here. You know, we're going to tighten down here to the side we're coming to, but it's you know, going to be basically like three over two here. But we've got an extra blocker, and we didn't bring anybody with it. You know, they kind of lined up into the boundary. So, you know, maybe a read. They like that based on pre-snap. At any rate, you know, get it to him quickly. Pick it up, get one block, and go get uh, something after contact. too. You really like this. Hit right here, he's 6'3", 180, drive through the contact, don't fumble, get an extra yard. All right, here he is against Auburn on third down. He's going to get a first down catch. And again, singled up into the boundary, short side of the field with the ball on the left hash. And then over here, you got three. So trips away from him, and he's the singled into the boundary. Um, he gets a one-on-one -on -one dig route. They're rotating it to man free into coverage against a five-man rush, and a quarterback puts it on him. It was just in time, too, because – Auburn ran a twist and, and got free to the quarterback, but he stood in there. Kid played big, and they killed Auburn in this game. Um, you can look at how, you know, his route gets open. He goes inside leverage, and whether it's a read or a call, he's running that dig across the first down stick. And the corner with his hips to the sideline, even though it's man, he's doing this on purpose to stay outside, not give him a go ball, and to force him inside to where you got safety help. Because what Auburn is doing is – the field safety is actually coming down and is going to take this back in the man-to-man -man responsibility if he leaves on a route. But he doesn't. The back stays in, so the safety just kind of gets wasted right here in the coverage. 
The only one who's taking inside leverage is the outside and man to man. Um, but you'll see here you get outside leverage you're trying to force everything into the one safety you're going to have in the middle of the field right there uh, on the snap. Auburn brought five. So it's six man protect, five with a back at six. Auburn brings a stand up linebacker, stand up linebacker, and they're three down guys. So they got five coming against six man protect. So you should be good, but they ran a twist and came free. You see that? So it's a two gap twist, one, two, and then all the way around here, it does not get picked up. So he's gonna hit the quarterback if he doesn't get it out in time. And so here you go. Again, corner, you know, wants to show him, but he's gonna jump to the outside and let him in. So get up past the stick, and then you gotta, you know, make the catch when the football's there. Safety's trying to not give up a go ball in the middle, so he's pedaling. Now you see him behind it, cornerbacks behind it. So it's a good route, good throw and catch there uh, against an SEC opponent. Another look at it. Here's that two-gap twist I'm talking about here. Stand up across, hand across here and around. It does not get picked up. He's going to hit the quarterback. See, it doesn't get passed off. This, is, this kid played great in this Auburn game. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the quarterback, what, who transferred to Vandy this year? Good throw and catch. This is him down here in the boundary. And so you can kind of see what uh, they had offensively. Ball in the middle of the field. They go three uh, to this side, single him up. Pretty clear what the defense is lining up in pre-snap. It's man free. And so what this kind of tells you, he was their touchdown maker and he was a one-on-one -on -one guy for them. And so when they got this kind of stuff, they took it. This is late in the year in the Conference USA Championship game. Outside move, good throw to the outside, a little bit of a push off, but catch the football. That's what I notice uh, about him is he, he really caught the ball. Now, you don't see drops and, and made some tough catches. So for a big guy, you can tell why he had some opportunities out of the portal. But again, watch his route here at the bottom. So, you know, stutter and delay and make sure there's some separation. Let him move, and then now you can get to the outside. He's got his head around looking. There you go. Extend those long arms, but don't get the call. <laughs> May get it called depending on who you play. But a good job catching the football. And like I say, uh, that's one thing I noticed in watching him. You get a look at it right here. So does he push off? I don't know. Pretty good no call. I mean, his arm is extended right there, but there's a lot of contact, and it's not like he really shoves him. So it's pretty good no call. And then turn and find the football. Make sure you're secure. It's a pretty sure-handed guy and the opportunities that he got. Okay, similar to before the scoring play, this time ball on the left hash, two receivers wide side, the third is a tight end, but similar in that, again, they're taking a one-on-one -on -one matchup in this Conference USA title game where they get three away, He's the single or the X, and any kind of one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to try to take it right here. Now, he's got a guy over the top, but uh, he's running a slant into that extra defender. Watch what he does taking it to the next level. And, you know, who knows if it's natural or depending on how it's coached, but it's really smart. And find that space behind him. Again, bottom of the screen, watch him. It's, um, you know, version of two, version of cover two. Two safeties, filtering them into that safety. But the safety's jumped all over it. Now, you got play action built into it on their play right here. They're showing a little, you know, fake pitch like this way to try to get people removed from the box because, why? Well, I'm going to run a slant, right? But this is a smart play right here. It's either seen it on film or reacting, but he's jumping all over the route like he's going to pick this. If you throw a slant right here, it's a pick because he's jumped the route. Excuse me. You throw a slant right here because he's uh, – you know, jumping this into your throwing lane right here. And I saw a really quick little look by Hudson, the receiver. Look at his eyes. So right here, he's off the ball. He's looking at quarterback. Ball's not coming out as he takes it. Now he's finding the defender. See him turn his head, find the defender. As soon as he jumps it, now it takes it to the next level. That's a great example of quarterback, receiver, same page. All right, so we're getting closer. Game one will be here before you know it. And just like everybody around the country, people get banged up. So if you're a state fan, you really hope that Kelly Akari can get healthy and get back. In the meantime, you're going to see a little bit of number 14 out there, the transfer, Trent Hudson from New Mexico State. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.